Space has always fascinated us, and we finally got to see a ship that not only had been to space, but had been to space 25 times. It's right here in our home city of Los Angeles, and you can see it too. It's the Space Shuttle Endeavor at the California Science Center. I'm Adam. We're the couple behind In the Great Wide, and we live here in Los Angeles. Um, we do. But something that I think is a big misconception about LA is that it is not just Hollywood. We have so much more to do here. Yeah. We have a ton yeah. of great museums, um, and the California Science Center is one of them. Yes, it is just outside of downtown, right next to USC. That's the University of Southern California. Uh, the best part about the California Science Center it's free! Yeah, it's it's completely free. Uh, you just have to pay for parking, or you can take the train down, which drops mm -hmm. off right outside the museum. Yeah, and there are a lot of stuff to see there, but today we're focusing on one of the biggest attractions there, the Space Shuttle Endeavor. The Endeavor was commissioned in 1987 to restore faith in the space program after the disaster of the Challenger in 1986. It was built from spare parts that were made for the other shuttles, which yeah. is pretty cool. The name was chosen by President George H.W. Bush from a slew of options submitted by schools uh, across the country. And the shuttle is named after the British HMS Endeavor, uh, which is the ship that took Captain James Cook on his first voyage of discovery between 1768 uh, and 1771. This is why the name is spelled in the British English manner rather than the American English manner without the U. Uh, the American doesn't have the U. They use like color, has O-U-R and all mm -hmm. that because they're British and they're weird. Um, <laughs> It's just a different it's just how spelling. It is. The funny thing is I usually spell stuff with a U. I, mm -hmm. I, I can't help it. It just looks more right to me. Mm. Anyway, uh, the space shuttle actually carried a piece of the original wood from Cook's ship inside the cockpit, which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, its first flight was in May 1992, and its final 25th mission was flown 19 years later in May of 2011. More than 20 organizations submitted proposals to NASA for the display of the shuttle, and then NASA announced that the Endeavor would go to the California Science Center in Los Angeles because of their unique proposal of how it would be displayed, which we'll get to in just a second. But for now, it lives in a temporary building, um, and it's one of the four places where you can see a space shuttle on display in the United States. The other places are in New York City, uh, Chantilly, Virginia, which is just outside of Washington, D.C., and Cape Canaveral, Florida, which is just outside of Orlando. Some require an admission fee, but this one is free to see, and it's the only one on the West Coast. It was actually flown to California from Cape Canaveral, Florida, on the back of a Boeing 747 in September 2012. They called it Mission 26. Yeah, and it was, the pictures of are this incredible. are crazy. Yeah. It looks crazy. It flew over a bunch of California landmarks, such as the Golden Gate Bridge and the Hollywood sign for Californians to see it before it arrived in LAX. Um, and for those who don't know, LAX is not close to downtown LA, uh, where the Endeavor needed to end up. Uh, so it would have to travel through the streets of the city to get there, yeah. which took three days. It was crazy. They had little mechanical, like, remote control wheels that would, like, guide it along. It was so cool. Uh, people lined up on the streets for hours on end to get a glimpse of it. I remember when this happened in 2012. I didn't realize it took three days. I thought it was a day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it took a long time because it had to move so slowly because it barely fit down a lot of the streets. There's a great video at the Science Center of the shuttle moving through the crowded streets of LA, uh, barely clearing some apartment buildings by mere inches. If you look at some comments on YouTube of some videos, people talk about how they could reach out and touch the wings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's crazy. And in some instances, power lines had to be temporarily taken out um, of the streets so the shuttle could pass through, and it would end up cutting out power to whole neighborhoods for hours at a time yeah. just so the space shuttle could get down the street to the California Science Center. You can see this and more in the companion display at the Science Center displaying the history of the space program. Uh, you don't have to go through the exhibit before seeing the Endeavor, but you should. 
You absolutely should because it's such a great buildup to then seeing the shuttle in person. The video seeing it travel through Los yeah. Angeles is so dramatic. It's great. There's 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 a lot like they have stuff that some of the astronauts took up. Like there's some consoles of like uh, they were observing it, like making mm -hmm. sure that when the shuttle was taking off and landing that it was okay. Like there was just a, a ton of cool stuff. It's yeah. really cool. They even have two uh, shuttle simulators uh, where you can experience takeoff and landing inside a shuttle. Uh, it costs a little extra. Uh, we didn't do it this time, but yeah. we'll probably go back and do it. Honestly. It's only it's only six bucks. So like, yeah. uh, we we will most likely do it the next time. We only didn't do it this time because we were there with your parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but then you go downstairs and into the separate building. Uh, it's a pavilion that they built just for the Endeavor. Uh, and if you're not sure where to go, just ask one of the employees. They're very friendly, and they will tell you. Yeah, and. Walking into this building, I mean, the building is built specifically for the Endeavor. Um, it is truly awe-inspiring. Yeah. Uh, the, the building was actually built around the Endeavor. They actually planted it there first and then mm. built it around it. But it, you're, nothing prepares you for walking in and just seeing this space shuttle, like, right there. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. I, I grew up watching all this stuff, like, watching, I mean, it was the heyday in the 80s of, like, you know, the shuttle's taking off and landing to the point where it got routine, but, like, seeing it so up close, it it, it blew my mind. Yeah, and it, it's huge, and it it's, it's hanging horizontally above you, and it feels like it's so close that you could touch it. It's not, but yeah. it it's, yeah. it's hanging so low right above you. Yeah. It's incredible to it's, see. It's really cool. Uh, also on display is the space hab, which was put inside the cargo bay of the shuttle to create more space for the astronauts for lab experiments and storage. Uh, it was also used to carry supplies to the International Space Station, which I thought was cool, but it was originally designed uh, to take tourists into space aboard the space shuttles. Um, but the Challenger disaster nixed that idea, so they ended up using it it's for cargo. crazy to think that NASA was considering taking tourists into space. Uh, every trip to space is a huge risk, so the yeah. fact that people go at all is mind-blowing, even after extensive training. Yeah, I can't imagine back then <laughs> just no. being like, I'm no. going to be a tourist yeah, right. in Let's space. Do it. Let's do it. They were trying They were trying a lot of different things back then yeah. to expand out the space program, um, like the teachers in space and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like They were trying a lot to, to get people more on board with it. There is also one of the engines on display, uh, one of the rocket engines, yeah. which is pretty cool to see. Huge, huge. The amount of power they need to send like three people or five people into space is crazy. Yeah, and I was surprised that the engine itself, granted it's one of many engines, um, it, that engine is not actually that big, but it has a lot of power oh, yeah. in yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I thought was really cool, surrounding the Endeavor on the walls is a timeline of plaques dedicated to every single space mission flown aboard the six space shuttles that were created. Yeah, you could spend quite a while um, just going through and reading every single one. We kind of started to do that, and after I, a while, we got a little overwhelmed I by it because it's so much yeah, information. About halfway through, and then it was like, uh, it's too much. It's yeah. too much. Um, and outside, there is a large orange external tank, uh, the only part of the space sh shuttle that is not reusable. This tank would hold the fuel uh, used to rocket the shuttle into space, and then it would be detached and disintegrate uh, in the atmosphere as it fell back down to Earth. There's also a great video showing them bringing the tank to the California Science Center via cargo ship through the Panama Canal. Uh, and the boat crew actually saved some stranded sailors off of the coast of Mexico. It's really crazy. Uh, yeah, such a crazy story. Can you imagine being like a stranded sailor <laughs> off the coast of Mexico and then being <laughs> rescued by... A giant rocket tank? Yeah. Insane. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, we wouldn't have known to go see it uh, if it weren't for a very eager docent. Yeah, and that's a great thing, too. There were a few docents wandering around inside the building uh, where the space shuttle is, uh, and they were super ready to answer oh, questions. so eager to talk about the shuttle. Yeah. It was great. Uh, our docent actually told us uh, the idea, and a big part of the reason that the California Science Center won the bid for the shuttle is the plan to have the only complete display of a space shuttle with the orange fuel tank stood vertically and with the, the two other rockets like it's about to take off. 
Yeah, the permanent building is currently being built and will eventually house the Endeavor um, in that display. Yeah. Um, and it will also include solid rocket boosters, um, which are the two white things that are next to the fuel tank, the orange fuel tank, um, making it the world's only full display of the whole space shuttle setup. I mean, personally, I understand why they want to make it the vertical display, because that's how we know it. Uh, but I like how it's displayed currently. Like, it's nice to be able to stand underneath the space shuttle and just see how big it is and, and the grandeur and awe-inspiring heft of it. It's, it's really great. And it's in a position where it kind of looks like it's flying already. Yeah, but they will eventually change it when the new building is built. So get out there now and, and see the space shuttle. Yeah, however, in the upcoming display, they are also going to include a steel gantry next to the space shuttle. Um, so you'll be able to ride an elevator up the full height of the space shuttle um, and view it from every angle, um, even seen inside one of the cargo bays, which they plan to open up. So that sounds really cool. <laughs> It'll be fun. I mean, I'm definitely gonna go back and look at it again before they do this, but I will definitely go back when they finally have it up. It'll, it'll be a bunch of other displays and, and exhibits mm -hmm. and stuff. It'll, it'll be really great. Um, it's, it's hard to explain why this is so cool to see and some people may not find it interesting like we do, but it is crazy to know that this thing has been to space 25 times carrying astronauts and supplies to the International Space Station. Yeah, so if you're into space, this is a must see in Los Angeles and the best part is that it is totally free. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week, uh, so keep a, an eye out for more things to do, not just in Los Angeles, but from all over the world. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the Great Wide somewhere.